Good infrastructure is as good as a guarantee for economic growth, employment and global competitiveness. Billions are spent every year on the development and implementation of sustainable infrastructure projects across Africa. But Africa, like the rest of the world, is constantly challenged and a lot more investment is required to drive growth. Dialogue around these challenges kicked off at the fourth annual Infrastructure Africa event held in Santon, Johannesburg. This is a business platform for private and public sector players involved in infrastructure development. The two-day conference offers the perfect opportunity to explore new ideas, to form and enhance business networks, and of course to talk about how to move Africa forward when it comes to addressing current infrastructure and energy challenges. Well, you know, if you go back to the World Bank report in 2009, uh, four things, I think, came out of that report at that point. It was focused on African infrastructure. It pointed out that between 2005 and 2009 there had been great progress in some areas, but that there were huge challenges in respect of infrastructure on the African continent that were greatly limiting uh, productivity and greatly limiting uh, GDP growth. So although we were seeing exceedingly rapid growth in Africa, the World Bank estimated that infrastructure shortages and weaknesses probably were trimming 2% per year of GDP growth in aggregate and cutting productivity by roughly 40% per annum. One of the challenges, according to the World Bank report, is to seek innovative ideas to create financial attractiveness and move the industry forward over the next five years. It was going to cost roughly $93 billion a year over a period of 10 years to be able to reduce the infrastructure gap to appropriate levels where GDP growth would be where it should be and productivity would be where it should be. Roughly half of that was needed for power and roughly one third for maintenance. They then had a look at what could be done in terms of effective savings through higher efficiencies in the government allocation of funding across the African continent and found that even if all of the potential efficiencies were executed, there was still a funding gap of about $31 billion per annum for at least 10 years. Now, until we fix that, we have Africa underperforming in an environment where declining commodity purchases are already putting pressure on commodity supplies in circumstances where financial volatility in global markets is putting significant pressure on the availability of investment finance for these types of purposes. So we have to fix it. Overall though, the outlook is positive, signalling an explosion of new business opportunities for the continent's infrastructure players. It's an explosion waiting to happen in terms of infrastructure development, absolutely. So uh, yeah, we've, we've got a good base here. Um, we're situated in Johannesburg, Durban and Cape Town. We've also got offices in Mozambique and in Namibia. So um, we're planning on spreading up into Africa as well. We're actually looking to hire more people now because our teams, our technical guys are just out constantly. So it, it's pretty much fully booked out. They go on site, they implement the software with clients on the projects, so they, they do the training on the software on the projects. We've done previous shows before, such as the building and construction events. Uh, for the infrastructure, this is the first time, but we've met a couple of uh, the big clients here, um, and they're looking for someone like us, a one-stop shop. Perhaps one of the biggest challenges facing the South African economy right now is its chronic electricity shortages. Despite this, foreign countries say they can still learn a thing or two from South Africa. I do believe that there's a great potential we can learn from South Africa, especially in the alternative sources of energy like solar, wind, tidal. We're a landlocked country, uh, unfortunately. We're not blessed like South Africa with uh, oceans or seas around. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we are blessed with a huge uh, oil and gas reserves. But we do understand that time will come and we have to think about another sources of power. 
In fact, many experts believe that South Africa is on its way to becoming one of the biggest renewable markets globally. Its renewable IPPs program is regarded as inspirational and visionary. So when we originally started out, we were focusing in six countries, but after our first year, because we had helped over 4,000 megawatts of projects reach financial close, we tripled our goal and made sure that it was clear that our work is, is all over the continent. So we're learning from, from countries like South Africa, which is very successful uh, renewable energy IPP program, trying to replicate some of what was learned from that in other countries as well, and, and trying to look at how we can focus on bringing more renewables and other sustainable resources to bear to help light the continent. President Obama launched Power Africa when he visited Cape Town about two years ago so that the poorest of the poor will have access to electricity, health care, education and basic economic activities. So for example, if you have a garment manufacturer in Nairobi that's producing 40,000 garments a day and the power goes out, it's not sustainable for them to run diesel generators in order for them to stay competitive from a pricing standpoint. So in order to keep make sure that these jobs continue to grow and the economies continue to grow, we need to make sure that the, the countries have the power that they need to sustain that growth. At the same time, we also have to make sure that the poorest of the poor in rural areas aren't left in the dark while the industrial areas continue to grow, which is why Power Africa also created Beyond the Grid, which is looking at solutions like rooftop solar with pay-as-you-go so that people can get access to basic power with a view towards them getting more power in the future. There is no doubt that there is a strong urgency amongst regional leaders and private stakeholders here to focus on building regional infrastructure to further unlock Africa's trade potential. Nashina Mohammed for Joburg Today.